and welcome to Off the Court with me, Caroline Barker, and her Tamsin Greenway. Bit of a momentous week this week. The Super League announcing that it's null and void. The season is done because of coronavirus. We now look ahead to 2021. Tamsin, your initial reaction, right decision? Uh, gutted, but understand the decision. And yeah, too many pieces to pull together. Not surprised. All right, we'll hear from Fran Connolly, CEO at England Netball to come. Dan Ryan joins us, Sarah Hale. So both perspectives from Northern Ireland and Wales too. And throughout, we'll get reaction from Super League coaches. Let's kick things off then with Karen Gregg, of course, coach at defending champions Manchester Thunder and Sam Bird from London Pulse. I'm really gutted um, that the season has been declared null and void. I personally wanted to see the season be played out in some kind of format that would have enabled us to defend our title. Um, I do feel like the decision might have come a little bit too soon, especially as you see what's happening in other sports and, you know, it's an ever evolving situation. I know as a franchise, we fought hard. We put a body of work together um, to take to England Netball to try and fight for something to happen. But unfortunately, um, you know, they've not taken that on to move forward and this decision has been made. Um, as a franchise, we are we are gutted. The girls are gutted. We had a really good pre-season. We had a great start to the season. Um, so with all that hard work now, we're just um, gutted that we're not able to follow it through. Um, hopefully we'll get to regroup in the next couple of months as a group and, you know, see, see each other social distance in some format um, just to kind of reconnect it and bond and hopefully have a really good, strong push um, to build for the 2021 season. We have at London Pulse obviously recognised the challenges that this pandemic had brought and whilst we'd uh, tried to put every measure in that we could to keep our athletes ready for competition, the reality is that um, without the resources of other sports it's been very difficult to be able to put our players safely back into a training environment. So the decision by England Netball to declare the league null and void is perhaps unsurprising but nonetheless devastating for our fans, our athletes and our staff. Uh, we are um, genuinely disappointed not to be able to continue to compete in this season, um, but we have to remember that people have lost family members and friends due to this pandemic and that has to take priority. In terms of looking forwards, we sincerely hope there will be a, a strong competition set in the autumn and we will certainly be training towards um, competing well in that. And we're, of course, now being able to plan with our partners and our sponsors for us to continue our good work that we've started this year into the 2021 season. Um, as a club that was placed 10th last year, we've obviously had an amazing start to this season, uh, winning three matches out of three. And so it's particularly disappointing for the players. Um, but we'll use that as motivation to um, plan ahead. We're looking to um, introduce a program of to plan, educate and inspire for our athletes from Super League all the way down to our hub athletes over the summer, uh, really to keep them engaged and connected with the club. And we will endure, uh, or certainly try to connect with the community in London over this uh, next few months. Tamsin, understandable reaction from, from Karen. Manchester Thunder had started like a train, as had London Pulse, actually. Yeah, both had started well, haven't, uh, hadn't they? But I think just the bigger picture and, and really interesting hearing from two coaches with two sort of probably, you know, Thunder being very vocal about wanting it to, to have been extended a little bit, to give them more time, that put proposals forward. And, and then Samba totally understanding of the situation, but talking about almost preparing for this autumn window. So you're already starting to see the difficulties that all these teams had and, and how awful it would have been for England Netball to sit there and try and piece together what has turned out to be, you know, this unpredictable situation. Well, let's hear from the one chairing all of that. We didn't want to be in her position. England Netball CEO, Fran Conley. And Fran joins us now. Fran, your reaction then, why the decision has been made now? Well, I, I guess it, it's a difficult decision to make at any time, and it's certainly not a decision that we've taken lightly. We spent the last 10 weeks in lockdown working with the Vitality Network Super League clubs, working through a number of different scenarios to return the 2020 season. But ultimately, I think we've now taken the decision in the best interest of the sport to ensure the welfare of all involved and, and quite crucially to protect the long term sustainability of the league. I think it's important now um, at this time we give clarity to players, to fans 
um, to spectators and, and supporters really to put them out of this state of limbo um, and to allow them to plan and focus particularly for the clubs on next season. We were just hearing from Karen Gregg, of course, defending champions, Manchester Thunder. And she has done and has asked why now. She thinks maybe that you could have waited another three or four weeks. Yeah, well, we waited as long as we felt we could. We tried to keep all possible options on the table for as long as possible. But ultimately, the decision came down to, to three factors. And the first one was the continued lack of certainty around when social distancing measures would be relaxed so that normal network training could resume. And for us as a as Super League, um, as you know, that we have teams from Wales and from Scotland, uh, and there are almost less certainty there at this point in time. So we know it takes four to six weeks to condition these players ready to get back onto court. So that put us quite a long way back in our current window that we had available. Secondly, when we're a non-asset owning sport and we're hugely reliant on public shared venues, many of which haven't yet confirmed when they're reopened. But at the earliest, that's likely to be the beginning of July. And then thirdly, our only option really now is to return behind closed doors. And with so many Super League clubs heavily reliant on ticketing revenue, it's just not a financially viable option. Um, and our decision was made to effectively protect the long-term sustainability of the competition at the cost of the short-term immediate league. I think, um, Fran, you talked about getting some clarity there and and we've been talking for the last few weeks about all these issues. I think behind the scenes, when you throw elite sport out there, people don't quite understand. Um, so all really relevant points. I think the fact for me now is, is the momentum um, moving forward. And we, we look at the Roses program and you think, well, a big bulk of those players, eight players are still playing out in Australia, so they'll get court time. So, you know, Jess has got that luxury of having probably a group of players that she can start to manage. Um, and then grassroots, we know, will be determined from government phases and how that produces. And we know at some point that will start to filter back in across the base. So what happens now to that middle group and keeping that momentum? Because I know it's a word we like to throw around, but how do we start to address that plan? Because for me, that middle group of how we, we get that grassroots to recognise the elite. And I think we've done so well in the past probably two years off the back of the Commonwealth Games and then with the World Cup, how successful that was. What is that plan now to make sure that that fan engagement stays um, positive and, you know, there's some outlook for them? Well, I, I think you summarised it really well, Tamsin. We, we've got to keep the momentum. This has been the most incredible start to any Super League season with record-breaking um, ticket sales at the season opener, 9,000 plus fans packing arena Birmingham. And, and that's why as a group of clubs, a Super League um, board and as England Netball, we're not taking the autumn option off the table. We want to explore all possibilities for some form of short form competition in that autumn window. And, and also alongside that, we need to fight hard to continue to carve out international competition for our roses. Um, and the, the netball family have stuck with us. They've been patient and I hope that they will see that we're trying our best to return people to course as soon as it's safe to do so. That autumn proposition, we heard Sam Bird talk about it too. Could that be behind closed doors? It, it may have to be. We're, we're modelling, again, both scenarios at this point in time. We very much hope social distancing measures will be relaxed, but if they're not, we won't take any undue risks. Um, so it would be behind closed doors. Um, but we still think that's important to increase the visibility of the sport and to keep the profile of the sport as it is and as all women's sport is at the moment an all time high. Is that to fulfil obligations to the broadcaster? as well, obviously Sky, the, the partner at, at the moment, or is your central focus on the, on the league? Central focus is on the visibility of the sport and the continued momentum building of the league. Um, it's not driven by broadcast um, or, or by any other commitments. It's driven by the desire to keep the profile of netball high. And we know um, we're talking about Super League, but this obviously has implications on the international game as well. Um, we've talked a little bit about the Roses there and, and you know that programme has always been quite secure with the amount of players that are playing overseas and, and, and clearly at least they're getting some sort of court time and that, and that international intensity that they need. 
uh, looking from a Scottish point of view, and we've got Sarah Hale and Dan Ryan joining us on the show, um, you know, there's, there's big queries around what that looks like for the home nations moving forward. International rankings matter for Commonwealth game selection um, and moving then into World Cup. Um, how are you working with those home nations at the minute? Is it something that's important to make sure that the sport across the board um, is looked after in the UK? In incredibly important and actually as home nations we're meeting on a weekly basis at the moment to look at the return to training from a league perspective and also the return to play from a community perspective uh, and we're uh, under no illusion that Europe is going to be hard hit by this in netball terms we can we're watching what's happening across the globe and other netball nations returning before us and I think it's imperative that we pull together and we make sure that we're not forgotten and we fight hard to retain as I said these carved out international fixtures because we are only a very few fixtures now between now and Birmingham Com Games in 2022 and we want to come back and defend that title. It's an it's a interesting point that Tamsin makes because of course those other home nations that have to qualify for, for the Commonwealth Games, the position that, that England's in, Australia and New Zealand too, are you really fighting for those in netballing terms, lower ranking nations and are Australia and New Zealand listening to that when it comes to the international calendar? I think we're absolutely in Europe fighting hard to make sure that it's a level playing field and I think there are questions up in the air at the moment about world rankings, will they be frozen etc um, and how qualifiers will be treated and I think to protect the integrity of the, of the sport it, it's imperative that whatever decision is, is fair for all and we're not penalised because netball isn't penalised in Europe because of the position we find ourselves in with the pandemic. So we're absolutely rallying around as netball Europe, as home countries to support that cause. We're, we're obviously also in dialogue regularly with Australia and New Zealand. We're on, we're on calls as well, weekly with them as well as South Africa to look at how we make sure the top level of netball competition can survive this and whenever possible we can return to competing against the top nations in the world. That missed level perhaps that, that Tamsin talks about, the one that really engages week in, week out, the Super League with, with the fans. Are, are there any clubs at the moment at real risk of, of going out of business because of what's happening? Well, I think it's fair to say that, that um, it, this is going to affect, the situation is going to affect the whole of netball to a significant degree from, from an England netball perspective, but also from a Super League club perspective. So what we've been trying to do over the last 10 weeks or so is really understand the financial models. And, and um, as you know, every model that underpins each of our different 10 franchises is very different. Um, so it's not a one size fits all. So we've been carefully working through those scenarios. And what we've been really clear about is we will not return the Super league um, at the cost of some clubs we need to protect the long-term financial viability of them and we need to be able to all return together um, so we've been carefully looking at the financials against and the logisticals against each of the different scenarios so, so you won't let a club go out of business I very much hope we won't let a club go out of business. We're also looking at any other possible route for revenue generation, whether that's through um, partner sources, whether that's through broadcast, whatever that might be in the future. We want to make sure that the Super League is retained and it is an absolute critical pillar in our new 10 year strategy. It is how we intend to professionalise the sport. So moving forward, um that's that's brilliant to hear that that's something that's being looked at because I know there was a lot of investment into the Roses program a few years ago and sort of uh, the cynical point, point was, you know, the Super League is where you're getting all those players from. So more investment into the Super League moving forward. You, you already talked about all those 10 teams, and I know this from being in there for a long time. They all operate so differently from financial to fan base to venues um, to commercial. So all their interests coming into these meetings would have been very, very different. And their concerns would have been different. Uh, so looking ahead, and you talked about that 10 year plan. Uh, this kind of music to the ears is is the super league a, a real now investment for England netball moving forward because actually if it if it had probably had more ownership we perhaps could have been able to wait longer in this situation or there could have been a more a joint approach yeah in terms of the super league it's absolutely been elevated in the prioritization across the, the sport it is now a central pillar of how we see take it how we see us taking the sport forward it is how we will professionalize the game and it's as important if not more important at this point in time to put resource and expertise around to get it to a level where it really can underpin that roses program and we can compete to be not just the best nation in the world but have the best league in the world as well and, and we've got a big journey 
journey to go on to do that. Um, but I think you'll see us taking bold steps in this next strategy and put in particular uh, emphasis on, on the super league itself. We're about to speak to, to Dan Ryan. He's got two hats on, uh, probably three hats on, given how sunny it is today. But he's obviously got this interest in, in Leeds Rhinos. Any new season that starts from here on in, will they be in it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we will honour our commitment to Leeds Rhinos. They've been involved in many of the discussions over the past weeks and they've made great strides um, to get themselves in the right order to, to take to the court for the first time next season. So we're really excited to see how they progress next year. And just finally for you, Fran, when you stepped into that, I mean, no one knew what was coming. No one was, knew what was coming when you stepped into that job. But you talked about ambition, about this being a fundamental sport, not just a, a fundamental women's sport, but about netball being a fundamental route here in the country. Are you getting enough support from the government, financial support, where to go next, how to, how to look forward next? Are you, are you getting what you think the sport deserves? We're certainly starting over the last couple of weeks to get more information from government and we're working really closely through our funding partner, which is Sport England, to, to jointly plan what that phase return looks like. And I think every sport in this country right now would put their hand up and say we need more money and we're certainly doing that loud and clear at the moment. Um, so I think there'll be more information circulated in the coming weeks. Certainly there'll be the release of more funding pots from Sport England and we remain confident that we'll be part of um, any decision-making process around potential new investments. But it is, it, it's imperative that we can be game changers as netball and it's imperative that we lead the way as, as female sport. It would be criminal to lose the momentum that female sport or female sport has seen over the last couple of years. Fran, thank you for coming on. Uh, it's not the, the hum you weren't expecting an easy ride through these first few months being in your new position, but you've taken it on and you're challenging it at least. From here, it can only go up, right? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fran Connolly, thank you for coming on Off the Court. Fran Connolly, England Netball CEO, talking all things uh, the voiding of the Super League for this season at least. Two people, three people that be interested in that. Of course, Tam's in with a Scotland head coach hat on. Dan Ryan from Leeds Rhinos and Northern Ireland. Sarah Hale from Wales join us too. Sarah, Dan, thank you for, for coming on the show. Sarah, just a, a few weeks into the, the job as Wales coach, your, your reaction then to the Super League being null and voided? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it's disappointing. We've got a number of athletes that play in the Super League and it's a real platform for us to see those athletes develop. And, you know, with Celtic Dragons in particular, it's, it's not something that we would have liked to have happened or, or even planned for. And I think it's very much, um, a, a, you know, a situation that you can't account for. And I think we've just got to keep planning as we are with Wales. We've got lots that we're doing behind the scenes um, to put us in the best place possible when we can return to the court. And obviously Super League would have been a part of that, but we just make other arrangements now and, and we, we move forward, I guess. Dan, with, the, with Northern Ireland on your mind, of course, you call players like Sarah play in the, in the Super League, how that affects you. But then as, as the new coach of Leeds Rhinos, this new team coming in it might be curtailed a bit the the preparation time you've got for the new season yeah it's a tough one I mean we had four athletes from Northern Ireland playing in the Super League this year which was one up from last year which I think was really positive and a couple of extra players sitting in training partner roles and within franchise environments which is massive for us because we don't obviously have the platform I guess like Scotland and Wales to have a Super League franchise linked to the the national team if we want to access it that way so you know we really try to get as many players involved in different franchises as possible so for them not to have that opportunity this year is is really difficult and I guess from a Leeds Rhinos perspective it it, it makes life a little bit more challenging because I guess the stories of the year doesn't play out in terms of players looking for opportunities elsewhere or you know who's in form who's out of form who emerges uh, all those different things that happen within a season that determine where players want to play and who from I guess a club's perspective we want to target in terms of recruitment so uh, it makes it a little bit tricky but um, look everyone's in a very similar position and it, it's a tough circumstance and you just got to take it as it comes and um, find your way through it. Yeah, I think, um, Sarah, I'm very similar to you. Well, actually, Dan as well, coming into the Leeds Rhino role and then as guys coming both into the international role. I think 
I look at it in two different ways at the moment. The sort of ending of the Super League and going, right, well, it's not going ahead means internationally there's a real focus and we can go, right, when we can get the players back. And I'm sure Jess Thurby would have been thinking the same. Well, and I'm sure she was probably pushing for that. The later this Super League was going to run on, the more impact it would have on your international calendar. However, I look at this year and it would be similar to the Leeds Rhino program as well, Dan. You know, this would have been very much my building of a culture, my creating a squad, the idea of how we wanted to play. Um, how key is going to be missing almost 10, 11 months of playing netball when, you know, the next big competitions internationally, the Commonwealth Games, and then moving into the World Cup. We talk about four-year cycles. Um, Sarah, how huge is that um, for you guys at the moment? Yeah, it's, it's massive. I think we're, you know, netball is is what, everybody here is is focused on most of their time and, and the girls are, are planning their lives around these competitions and and you know we we're sort of bound by the calendar and we, we almost feel a comfort in having you know regular cycles and things that we can sort of keep an eye on and, and as coaches it helps you do what you, you need to do but I think it's you know taking a pragmatic view of it and and almost saying you know it's a challenge for us and, and yes it, it's it's exceptional circumstances and nobody wants this and we all want to be back on court but I think what what my role and, and my responsibility is I guess to the team is to to have a plan and to, to, to have them be involved in that plan and talk to them regularly about what things look like from their perspective what they look like from our perspective because if they can get through this then I think getting to competitions and and being in those those, those spaces that we want to be in will be really much easier for us so yeah it's, it's and said at the beginning it's, it's not what we wanted it to be and, and it has a massive effect on our preparations you know looking forward to Commonwealth Games and World Championships or Europe this year um, now not happening we had other things in the calendar later in the year that might not be happening but I think it's about as you said at times in the things you can do away from the on-court stuff that actually put you in a really good position then when you do return to the court and seeing how the girls have have embraced those off-court opportunities has, has been really useful for me actually as a coach and gives you some insights into those that cope really well, those that are struggling, those that need an arm around them and actually I may not have seen that if we hadn't been in this situation so I think there are actually some positives that are coming out of it for us. I think that's been really important to look at look at the positives because as Dan you mentioned we're all in the same boat you know reality every club is is the same they want to get their hands on the players they can't so they've got to be creative about what they're doing and, and I think you're right Sarah I think looking at what people are doing across the board in terms of the stuff you're seeing on social you know netball is coping very very well how long that can continue will be of interest to me but I, I think you're right I think netball's always had this way of us all just grouping together we talk about the netball family but Dan talk to me about the nitty-gritty because um, we spoke to Frank Connolly earlier about sort of rankings and I think this is stuff that I'm finding new into the role having played for England for 10 years you just go to competitions and you just play you know that's the expectation um, I'm now working out how ranking points work which is just um, you know the qualification for Worlds and, and for Commonwealth aren't straightforward Netball Europe is key in that so how does that sit with you guys at the moment from a, from a Northern Ireland point of view? What are you hoping that INF will sort of bring in to protect the countries that may not be able to play in the next 12 months? Yeah, it's a really good question and, and probably one of um, the really challenging aspects of uh, coaching a national team and a national program when you aren't guaranteed of these automatic selections in major competitions. Because I guess the biggest thing for us that remains as a focus is where we sit in terms of world rankings to ensure that we're on track to qualify for Birmingham Commonwealth Games and obviously the process to, to go through to qualify for the next World Cup. So as a, as a new coach going into the job, my initial aspiration was to push Northern Ireland above and beyond where we've ever been before to really try and instill a winner's mindset into the way they, they approach things and get them as much exposure against tougher opposition as possible. But then once you kind of get into the role, you understand the reality of the circumstances around funding, around logistics, around all those challenges that the, the nations around our world ranking, I guess, outside the top three or four, we don't have pots of money to be able to travel anywhere and play whoever we want. We need to be quite strategic with it. So the philosophy of the way that I work within this program changes a little bit because the number one thing we need to do is make sure that we're visible at major competitions. And that means we have to stick to the status quo and make sure that we're within the qualifying in terms of our world rankings at certain times. So while yes, I'd love to take the team to the Southern hemisphere and, you know, play again or, you know, around Australia, New Zealand and test them against really great opposition. 
we actually need to be playing test matches where we can get results and also get wins on the board for ranking points. So it's quite conflicting in my mind. I obviously always want to win when I coach, but we also need to make sure and test the players. Um, but you also need to make sure that you're in a position to, to be present at those major competitions. And I guess world ranking sits as the number one priority at the moment. Um, and ensuring that I guess the integrity of the world ranking system is maintained over this period of time when not all countries can play. So um, I'm obviously a big supporter of freezing the world rankings mm -hmm. for an extended period of time. And then when the green light comes for all countries to be in a position to play, that we then move forward as we would if this wasn't taking place. That's, that's common sense, right, Sarah, isn't it? it in, they have to freeze them because if you've got one team picking up ranking points, it could be somewhere that's isolated that, that's not at the moment got any sort of lockdown that in theory could just keep picking up, picking up points against playing against another in a, a similar situation. And that, that could really stuff a team like, like Wales, couldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's exactly right. I think it has to be across the board. I think you have to take a, again a, a pragmatic approach to things and say this is affecting the whole, you know, netball community in the world. And yes, you may have countries that are not experiencing it yet, but they may experience it later down the line. And I think having a period where, you know, from the time the first country went into lockdown or whatever it was, you know, having that I think is the sensible approach. But we're, we're talking about this, um, you know, with our CEO and and various people that sit around the table with with um, you know the governing bodies from that perspective. And I think we're all we're all saying the same thing in terms of the, our nations, you know, within the UK that that would be sensible. But I imagine there are other nations that probably would take a different approach to it because of where they sit in the ranking. So it's, it's it's a challenge, I think, to get it right, but I think that's the fair and, and sensible approach. Yeah, and that's that's the challenge that's facing, I guess, the, the Premier League at the moment, any of these these major sporting leagues around the world, whether they freeze or stop or go and, where, and what happens next. Dan, just just finally from you then, Leeds, the expectation, would you, would you look at this autumn tournament that we're talking about or, or do you think it's now from the start of next year, the new season, that's, that's where you're headed? Yeah, definitely 2021. I think realistically, you know, as it stands at the moment, we have zero signed players within our franchise. So, you know, in this time where we can't actually sign anyone or even get on a court and do any form of netball, I think it's really unrealistic for us to be involved in anything apart from uh, the 2021 Super League. So certainly not on our radar. And, you know, we need to continue going through our planning and recruitment strategy over the next period of time. And, um, you know, just concentrate on what's most important and, and that's setting it up for us and getting the right people involved and um, we'll be ready to go for 2021, but certainly nothing in autumn, I wouldn't imagine. Just, um, oh, hang on, just a heads up, Dan, I'm ready for my fourth comeback if you want your first player. <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah, add you I'm to the not. list here. We'll have a chat about it. <laughs> <laughs> Very diplomatic. <laughs> One sort of signed player. Uh, Sarah, do you fancy going and, and pulling on the trainers for Leeds Rhinos? I've got a good few minutes with me down if you ever need it. So, <laughs> well, yeah. I need impact players so yeah you guys you, you're, you're in the mix we'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come on with the magic sponge. Um, thank you both so much for coming on off the court. Sarah before we let you go congratulations by the way on the new <laughs> job. Are you enjoying it? Is there an yeah. element you're enjoying? Yeah I am. I mean it's different for me because it's not my full-time job so I have another job that I go to and then I obviously do my netball stuff and it's actually really nice to have the blend of, of both worlds I guess because it keeps me on a level um, but I, I hugely enjoy it. I mean coaching your country is the, is the pinnacle and, and you know it, it's something I've always wanted to do so I'm, I'm excited by it and as I said I'm kind of a relaxed character so I take it as it comes and, and hopefully you know we'll all get through it and it'll be a lot anything else will be a breeze Caroline. <laughs> Too right well hopefully we'll see you both back on that that coaching bench or up out of it I guess if you're anything like Tamsin. Uh, we haven't even asked you about what coaching style you, you'd like to adopt Sarah and whether you'll be wearing uh, the full training gear like these two or the suit. Um, I'd say I'd, I'm much more comfortable in a track suit but um, I I'm a bit of a, a team player, so my manager really likes to be in a suit. So I'll probably just wear a suit because I think it makes her feel a lot more comfortable and it doesn't really bother me, to be honest. So I prefer a track suit, but if they insist on suits, then that's what we'll go for. See, they may have just cancelled the Super League, but you get the key questions asked here <laughs> on Off The Court. Dan, Sarah, thank you so much for coming on. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. So those are the voices from around the nations and an interesting times in, and this is where you wanted to see it going forward to that actually much more joined up between the netball super league having weight to 
what the the international level will happen not just for england but as dan and sarah were saying the importance of it for northern ireland and wales too yeah and just music to the ears really it's with what i've been hoping for for such a long time and, and look no one could have predicted ever this crisis and that's kind of not my point you know i've been vocal about um how much attention the roses program has got in and then sort of how little the super league has got in in sort of this joint joint up approach it, it just hasn't worked for me it hasn't sat comfortably so it's really nice to hear Fran talking about their plans for the future it was a long-term plan um, but you know throwing things around like being the best league in the world and and really supporting that to push it forward and um, yeah fingers crossed that for me is the way forward for netball now we know through women's football what's happened there, through men's football, Championship League 1, League 2, just so much scratching of head. People not trying to know what way is the best way to go with netball as well, the financial cost of it to what it would cost for testing. Clearly difficult, difficult position for everyone. We've brought you a few voices throughout this show already. We'll hear some of your reaction in just a moment. Use the hashtag off the court to be part of anything that we say over the coming weeks. We are staying here. Quick reminder as well, you'll be able to see netball from New Zealand when they get up and running. Every game that's shown over in New Zealand will be shown by Sky here too. So there will be netball to watch before autumn. Fingers crossed that we see it here in the UK. Let's get some more reaction then. Sarah Bayman, coach at Loughborough Lightning and also from Mickey Austin at Surrey Storm. Obviously, the decision is massively disappointing, but I think from a Super League perspective, it's felt like this has been coming for a while. Um, when you look at the lack of time frame on getting indoor sport back, um, the lack of time frame on on getting netball back, and the fact that you know a lot of a lot of Super League teams train at public facilities, like it could be a long, long time before they get opened. Um, it just started to look less and less likely that the league was going to get played. I think what I'm pleased about is that you know clubs, players, everyone has has got a little bit of clarity and a, and a decision has been made. Um, a disappointing result for everyone. Um, but I think when you factor in the fact that everyone's contract, players-wise, um, pretty much ends in July, um, you know, n nothing was going to get played before late autumn winter time now um it was starting to look unmanageable for clubs in terms of the finances of it um i i'd still expect that netball when it does come back will probably be behind closed doors but to add that cost onto um the fact that teams have already been paying players for this season um for a lot of clubs they well we don't know if they'll if they'll survive as it is so like I said, I think it was inevitable, but it's disappointing. Um, and now we've just got to look forward to hopefully some international netball um, getting played at the end of the year. Um, the Australian and New Zealand leagues probably getting played. Um, but, you know, English netball at the minute, a little, little bit in mourning for, for what could have been this year. Hi guys, Mickey Austin here, just giving some reaction off the back of the sad news today that the 2020 season is cancelled. Um, as sad as it is, I, I can't say I'm surprised, and for me it's 100% the right decision, um, you know, for the for the safety and well-being of everybody involved, whether that's players or staff or fans, um, given the current COVID-19 situation, you know, for me it's 100% the right decision. Um, but it is really sad and, and so weird, this will be the longest I've gone without playing netball since I I began um so so yeah just just really sad to not be able to see out uh, the season with this playing group because you know we had such a great bunch of girls and, and a really exciting feeling but um you know now let's just look ahead about making the 2021 season the most amazing product possible and here's to the longest pre-season ever use the hashtag off the court at sky netball to get in touch as well some of your reaction then Throughout the, the coming weeks, we're going to see more of this too as netball starts to rebuild. Knights men's netball, who we've seen grown, haven't we, Tamsin, over the past couple of months as well. Just their support, seeing the coaching sessions, right decision, obviously disappointing. We look forward to a bigger and better season in 2021. Jody Gibson, hoping to, to make the court with Mavericks as well. England real star, right decision, going to miss it. Let's stay connected. That's key, isn't it, Tamsin, going forward as well to keep that momentum, that conversation going. Definitely. And we, and we had that chat earlier with Sarah, how, you know, I think 
everybody's been so positive so far. I think what's going to happen over the next few weeks, few months, as we start to move out this lockdown and different things start happening, it's going to be more important than ever to make sure we're still keeping that conversation going. We've got to be creative with how we put it out there um, and almost have that plan of, of what people have got to look forward to so it doesn't go too far out of people's minds. I'm not saying we're bored with gardening, but we're not going anywhere and we're staying here over the next few weeks at least. Sophie Morgan talking about Celtic Dragons and just how impressed she's been with the, the management team and what they're doing and that momentum, health and safety. Everyone's reiterated that, haven't they? Of course, health and safety important to get everyone back and going. Team White, England netball officiating. Gary Burgess has put out some strong messages. But this about netball return, getting every venue sold out with massive crowds and that's got to be the aim now the target now for these clubs yeah i just think it's a perfect opportunity to change the mindset you know let's look at the positives from this lockdown things have to come out of it differently they're going to have to operate our world is not going to quite look the same without being too american hollywood dramatic but you know there are going to be some changes and it's not even necessarily for about the venues being sold out for me this is because we don't know when the fan base is coming back this is about how do you keep the interest well you know what if we can start to try and work out ways to get the games on TV, how do we engage a new crowd, a new audience, how do we look at uh, a digital platform, how do we promote it socially, like, let's now have a different kind of mindset to how we bring A, the people back that love it, B, the people that play that perhaps don't mm. engage in the elite and, and C, that new audience. Uh, talking of, of Hollywood, here's a potential star, <laughs> Lauren Nichols, <laughs> bringing up, uh, that's how we all feel, that sums yeah. it up really, 2020 netball season, uh, still wearing and sharing that love for lightning a bit. You mentioned Hollywood. I mean, I'm bang up for that. A Hollywood epic. Uh, uh, Netball Super League playing, season 2021. Who's playing you? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> Although, I'm going to give you one clue. <laughs> I don't know. How Miranda, you? apparently. Oh, <laughs> apparently. Oh, you know what? Screw it. We're doing our own little cameo. We'll have right. playlists and then me and you just doing the comms. Okay, as long as they don't have to play because there'll be sweat everywhere. <laughs> uh, we will be back next week. That's our reaction to what's been a, a, a tough couple of days for Netball Super League, but where it goes next. As I say, we'll have Netball from New Zealand to watch over the coming months as well. And then that hope, that hope that come autumn, we will see some more Netball here in the UK. Thank you for watching. Use the hashtag off the court to be part of it. Terms in Greenway, I'll see you next time. Yes. Back to the gardening. Sky Sports. Feel it all.